Hello, and welcome to this section about plant pigments. Um, I'd just like to start by asking if you remember from uh, one of our previous units, what is an autotroph? If you'll recall, autotrophs are organisms that obtain their energy from non-living sources. Um, there are uh, photoautotrophs, and they depend on photosynthesis. Um, they rely on energy from the sun, a non-living source. There are also chemoautotrophs, which gain their um, energy from chemicals. Proto, uh, or prokaryotes are the uh, chemoautotrophs or are usually prokaryotes. Photoautotrophs, you probably know already that those are usually plants. So we are going to step back and look just for a moment at electromagnetic radiation and the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, you probably have seen this before, but um, it's just a little review on what this is. Electromagnetic radiation uh, can come from a variety of sources, anything from um, radio waves to microwaves, cell phones, um, here we have gamma rays or very high energy electromagnetic radiation and x-rays. And then we also have the infrared radiation, visible light, and ultraviolet radiation. You, you might have heard these being referred to as IR and UV. And then here we have our visible light. That's the light that we can see. And when we look at the spectrum of visible light, just that little portion here, we see the different colors represented um, by the different wavelengths um, of this energy. We have red all the way to purple. You guys probably remember from elementary school, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And that was a way you could remember the colors of the visible spectrum in order. Um, this is important because some of these wavelengths of energy are the critical wavelengths in photosynthesis. So I want you to just to have a good idea of the bigger picture of electromagnetic radi radiation and the fact that plants utilize the wavelengths within here and very some, some very specific wavelengths within the visible region. So we're going to look a little bit more at these wavelengths and the different wavelengths produce these different colors of light, okay? And uh, the different wavelengths are also associated with different energy. Um, down here in the blue and purple regions, uh, those wavelengths carry higher energies than in the red. The higher the wavelength, the lower the energy, and the lower the wavelength, the higher the energy. They're inversely proportional. So what does that mean for plants? Photoautotrophic cells contain pigments. And pigments are what are responsible for absorbing the sunlight. And they absorb visible sunlight. Uh, plants depend on the green pigment chlorophyll. And there are two different forms of chlorophyll, um, A and B. Not all plants have both kinds of chlorophyll. But for those that do, if we look at a graph and we look and see how, um, how well chlorophyll A absorbs different wavelengths and how uh, well chlorophyll uh, B uh, uh, absorbs energy at different wavelengths, it's very interesting. We see that chlorophyll A is absorbing um, at, at peak amounts at this wavelength right here, about 430 nanometers, okay? Uh, it's in this blue region. Chlorophyll B is absorbing right here at a, a very peak amount, um, and it's about 460 nanometers. And again, they're both absorbing in this region over here um, where we have wavelengths representing orangey-red uh, colors of light. That's very interesting to us because we have our plants absorbing lots of energy in these wavelengths representing these colors of light. And look, the green area is not absorbing. Chlorophyll does not absorb green light. It does not absorb the wavelengths that give us this color of light. Well, then why are plants green? 
And the reason is that they are reflecting the green light. And so our eyes see the green light, but they do not absorb uh, wavelengths at that light. So where is this chlorophyll, these plant pigments that we're talking about? Chlorophyll, as well as other pigments, are located in organelles called chloroplasts. You remember, here's a picture of some cells, and we see lots of chloroplasts in these cells. All that green, um, those little green circles, those are all chloroplasts. What is the structure of a chloroplast? Here is a diagram showing what one of those chloroplasts looks like in a typical plant cell. And we have here the outer membrane of the chloroplast and an inner membrane, and we have these structures called thylakoids. Thylakoids are really important structures because within their membranes, pigments are located, specifically chlorophyll and other pigments that um, carry out photosynthesis. So why again are plants green? Well, I'll just go over this one more time. What colors of visible light do plants absorb? What colors do they reflect? If you'll remember, the reds and the blues are colors that plants absorb, okay? And remember, green is a color that plants reflect. So we see green because plants do not absorb the wavelength of green light. And here, it's just a little recap on that. The pigment responsible for all of this absorption is chlorophyll. There are several other pigments as well. They are located inside the chloroplasts of the plant cell within the thylakoid membranes. That's just a little review for you. So if you want some advanced proficiency, um, you might look at the more uh, information about the electromagnetic spectrum. What are the relationships between wavelength and frequency? What are those things? Um, how are wavelength, frequency, and speed mathematically related? At what speed do visible light waves travel? Investigate different forms of electromagnetic radiation other than visible light. And uh, you can tell me about it, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say.